Yeah. Okay, that's great. I'm going to start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dringjie uh, from uh, Liverpool School of Architecture, and I really enjoyed everybody's presentation. And uh, I think my it looks like it's slightly different. And uh, on response to um, Ali's first presentation by stating that we are not on the same ship, I totally agree with that. And therefore, I'm going to bring everybody's attention to Dhaka and to focus on the urban poor and perhaps sometimes have been forgotten in, in our daily lives. So last year we had the opportunity to win uh, ODA funded research uh, to to conduct some research uh, in, in uh, informal settlement in Korea in Dhaka. And it's also uh, funded by the Spanish embassy in Bangladesh as well. Um, so for some of you might not be familiar with uh, with the uh, environment or context of Dhaka and Dhaka is the capital of uh, of Bangladesh. It's very, very uh, dense and has a huge population and the density of the capital is 46, uh, 46,000 people per square kilometer. So I listed some comparison to Mumbai, to Kakata, to Paris, and then you can see it's it's really, really dense. And so here you can see an image uh, of the city. So Karel is the name of the slum and which in some contexts people prefer not to call it slum instead of calling it informal settlement. I completely agree with that. And then you can see the informal settlement is, is here and then you see the, the city uh, over there. And we are collaborating with uh, Brack University and then which is in one of these high rise buildings uh, over there. Then you can see how cities, one city has been hugely divided into two completely different contexts, but everyone is in fact in one city. So then here's a better image. You can see that here's a formal city. Here is an informal settlement. You might think, well, what's the connection between these two? Well, in fact, many, most of the people who are living in Karel in this informal settlement are working in the city. So every day they commute from here and then to work in the city. But obviously they are not working in computer science or or, or let's say uh, are working as engineers. They work as the fund. In my opinion, they are the foundation of the city. The, the core something that holds the entire city together. So Bangladesh is 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 a is a is a country that is some very, quite often get flooded. So it has a natural disaster, and it has political uh, uh, conflicts uh, as well. And then you might have also heard of that. You know, some data shows that 58 uh, percent of Korea's family depend on the uh, domestic uh, service. So many people who are living in the informal settlement, they work in a city as as cook, as mates, as uh, maid, maids, uh, as chauffeurs, uh, drivers uh, for the people, for the rich people uh, in the city. And many people who are living there also, you know, work in the uh, informal garments uh, industry um, as well. That has also brought a huge uh, attention uh, globally. And then 50 Karel's men are rickshaw pullers. So in fact, on the site, you could see that uh, there's a park parking space for, for everybody to park uh, their rickshaw, rickshaws there. And then it's a, it's a place, why it's called informal, but because according to the policy, it's kind of illegal. And so they are all the time have under the threat of being evicted uh, by, 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 by the uh, other part of the city. And then because of that, they brought lots of uh, global attention. So there's many important NGOs are working in, in Dhaka, including BRAC, the largest uh, NGO also, water aid, uh, etc. Et this is BRAC uh, is the largest NGO coming from, uh, coming from um, uh, Dhaka uh, itself. And then sometimes one, one you know, the government will try to set the house on fire and try to evict them from the informal settlement to claim the land back to the city. And we noticed the one problem is that there is um, a terrible, terrible infrastructure for water and electricity. So that is the sewage system, 
that you can see there. So we were working with uh, Brack University. So it's our research assistant have uh, taken the images and we could not be there at this time due to the pandemic uh, reasons. Um, so the sewage system is 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 absolutely appalling. And so there's even though with a lot of help uh, from the NGO, but it's very actually very difficult to build a complete in infrastructure in this uh, informal settlement. So so they have a very the, the sanitation is is under a huge risk. And then also that connects with everything with the kitchens, with showers, with water resources for their drinking water uh, as well. Some simple data tells you that uh, the diseases um, spread uh, in these very high density density populations possibly faster because due to poor sanitation and also the under five child mortality rate in informal settlement is very high. In fact, it is almost 80% higher compared to the other urban areas uh, in Bangladesh. So our research question was how to improve uh, the sanitation system in Korea and how to reduce this pollution by the lake, uh, which is called a Banali Lake. And you can see some uh, Google images here from 2003. And this is a, a lake there. And then people start to immigrate to the city uh, from other parts of Bangladesh because there are more job, job opportunities. And gradually 2011, 2021, then lake is, is disappearing. It's tiny little bit here. So by looking at it again, very recently, the, the lake is almost gone. Uh, is, is has disappeared. So we located uh, where the toilets are, uh, the sanitation system through some previous research by a collaborator, Tensil, and then we uh, chose two alley and then to make a thorough study of these uh, of these alleys. Then we selected one. I don't remember the name now. I, I do remember the name. I just cannot pronounce them. So this is one of the alleys. Then we interviewed uh, all the people who are living there and then to also find out their their mobility every day you know how do they travel to the former city and when do they come back and then we uh, produce this map then to show their mobility uh, everyday mobility and then you know by by doing that we gain a thorough understanding of roughly how how is it uh, the, how people's interaction with uh, with the sanitation system there and also we interview them to find out their personal stories because many of these toilets are run by bariwalas and which means the the own these uh, uh, informal settlement then they rent out homes and the toilets become very essential in people's daily daily lives and because that's also a way to show the wealth as well so we did a very thorough research and to model all the toilets with, with a very, very detailed uh, modeling. And then here's some uh, findings. Uh, findings. I'm not going to go too much about that. And we realized the one huge problem is that some people actually have the money comparing to the people who are living in the city, but they are so afraid of actually uh, spend their money uh, to, to have a nice home because they are always under the threat of being evicted. And, uh, you know, uh, and then we also studied the second alley and we used a similar method as the previous one to map out people's uh, daily life routine. So in this, so this is uh, some images uh, of the second second alley and you can see uh, in some images the, the former cities not far, not not far uh, at all from the informal settlement and uh, very close, so possibly one hour, uh, I would say. So, so we have kind of uh, completed our our foundation research, and uh, in the past year we collected a lot of uh, very very interesting data. And I believe no one, no no other research groups have done such sort of store, uh, research about toilets uh, in informal settlement. So we are producing a book, uh, a manual uh, to to discuss, um, you know, how can we design uh, from the architectural perspective design the infrastructure uh, better so we are running we have been running a very intensive workshop this week and then to map out the ideas and then to how do we uh, improve that so what's our uh, next step so at the moment we are looking at uh, opportunities to work very closely with water aid is also a very important ngo and we want to develop a prototype of a solar septic tank uh, for the community-led infrastructure 
and especially for the COVID-19 recovery to improve uh, public health. And one thing people don't realize that, um, you know, through the pandemic and also people who eventually suffer the most are the people who are living in extremely poor conditions in the, in the urban cities. And then the other will be the first people to lose their jobs. And because, you know, when when the country was in lockdown, the rich or poorers and had no had no jobs then. But then even, you know, sometimes when you are living, when you are, you know, middle class or from, uh, you know, normal, normal situation, even you don't have a job for a few months, you can continue to survive. But for someone also in, in a liver city, but in an informal settlement, if you lose job for a few months, and that means that the family might not be able to survive at all. So we have discussed this idea with Water Aid, and we, we are receiving some really interesting uh, support. So we'll see how it goes from there. And then the next step in our research is to di discuss what is a good city. And then, you know, um, some of you might be aware there is a BA funding call. And so we have discussed uh, some fundamental ideas about, you know, uh, the, what is good city can be analyzed through the health crisis, through the climate change crisis, and through, uh, from the natural disasters uh, as well. And I understand this is a, a not a, a conference, and then and I'm also from a social science a background, but I guess I'm here to try to see other people's work and then to see whether we could develop some inter, interdisciplinary research together uh, for the future. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Xi. I think um, you are doing a very meaningful job uh, back there. I, I really like it. Thank I you. Think, um, yeah, you and your team are making a difference um, in that uh, uh, city. Thank I'd you. I'd like to yeah, discuss more with you later because that's quite important for um, 